this video, we are going to talk about pre and five spoke poles and why it is important to pay attention to them when it comes to sub D modeling. We'll go over when and where they commonly occur, discuss some of the issues they cause, and what you can do about them. All right, so I've got a couple of examples here. I'm just going to zoom into the models on the left hand side here. And let's take a look at where and when three spoke poles tend to occur. So, one of the places they tend to occur is when you subdivide a triangle. So I've got a triangular plane here, and if I add a level of subdivision to this and apply it, this triangle is basically going to resolve into three four-sided polygons with a three-spoke pole in the middle. So let's just tab into edit mode and see what we've got. So we've got a vert in the middle with three edges that are basically merging from it three four-sided polygons around it. So let's just see this in action. So I've got a basic model here. So this is a basic shape of a beveled cornered dice. So let's just tab into edit mode to see the topology. So you'll notice that all the corners have triangles and that is because I've gone ahead and beveled the verts there. So upon subdividing this, You'll notice that that triangle that we had there in that corner has now gone ahead and turned into three four-sided polygons with a three-spoke pole in the middle. So this is typically where you will find three-spoke poles. Another place you'll find them is on corners, so external corners of objects. So with a cube, all the corners will basically have three-spoke poles. Let's just move on now to the next example, which is when we are redirecting loops and also reducing loops. So I've got basically three edges that are running upward like this, and they converge at a point and then continue off as a single loop. Now you'll notice that where this edge in the middle ends, we end up getting a three spoke pole. Now you'll also notice that we have a five spoke pole above it, but we'll talk about that in a second. Now, when you perform an inset, you also end up with three spoke poles like this. So, anytime you select something and inset it, it's going to create three spoke poles. You'll also notice that it comes with five spoke poles right about here. And we'll talk about that again in a second. So, let's just go ahead and see where five spoke poles tend to occur. So, I've got a five sided polygon here. So this is five-sided n-gon, and basically when I subdivide this, it's going to resolve into four-sided polygons. So you're going to get five four-sided polygons with a five-spoke pole in the middle. I know, a bit confusing. But let's just go ahead and see this in action. So I'm going to apply that subdivision surface modifier to it, and when I tab into edit mode, you have five polygons with four sides with a five-spoke pole in the middle. So but here with five edges basically emerging from it. Now let's go ahead and see that example we just took a look at a second ago. And you'll notice that when we tend to redirect loops or tend to reduce loops, we will end up with so a single pair of basically three spoke poles here and a five spoke pole here. So same thing with the inset. Whenever you insert anything, you're going to get three spoke poles in, on the inside, and you're going to get five spoke poles on the outside. So this is going to happen every time. Whenever you perform this modeling operation, we'll have a three spoke pole as well as a five spoke pole. So that's something to just keep in mind when you're doing this. I've got another example here. As you can see, I've just extruded something here. And you'll notice every time we perform an extrusion, we are going to end up with a five spoke pole at the area at which there is a plane change. Same thing with the extrusion here. So it doesn't matter whether you're extruding internally or externally. So at that point where there's a plane change, you're going to find a five spoke pole. That's why it is always important when you are modeling and you are going to perform an extrusion, it's always important to first perform an inset, and then an extrusion. That way, we deal with that five-spoke pole 
by pushing it out. And we now don't have that sitting on that loop where that plane change takes place. So that's something to just keep in mind. And we have this last example here where we have an N gone here and gone here. So these are both five sided N gons. And if I just go ahead and add a level of subdivision to this, it's going to resolve into basically five spoke poles with five polygons around it with four sides. So that's how five spoke poles and three spoke poles tend to occur. Let's now move on to a different example in order to discuss the problem with three and five spoke poles, as well as look at how we can deal with them. All right, so I've got two identical shapes here. And when subdivision modeling, you might be tempted to add a bunch of loops like so in order to control the curvature, to preserve some of the edges and corners, and to control the sharpness. So let's just go ahead and do that. So let's just add a subdivision surface modifier to this. And we've missed out a loop right here. And you might do this and think this is A-OK. -okay. However, this is a problem. So let's just take a look at our second model here. So if we examine this a little closely, you'll notice that the external corner has a three-spoke pole. Same thing with all the external corners. And if you look at the internal corner, we have a five-spoke pole on either corner. Now this has to be dealt with. And the reason we need to deal with this is because three-spoke poles and five-spoke poles tend to interrupt our edge flow. So if I were to try and select this entire boundary loop here, it's not going to allow me to do so because it's going to stop it at the three-spoke pole here. So again, if I try to do that, it's going to stop right where that five-spoke pole is. So it's not going to allow us to select our boundary loop. So in order to remedy this, we just need to select all our external faces here, faces on the outside here, and inset it. So when I inset this, what's going to happen is it's taking that three-spoke pole and that five-spoke pole and pushing it inward. And in doing so, what ends up happening is I can now select that entire boundary loop on either side, like this. So now that we've dealt with that three spoke pole and five spoke pole, let's go ahead and add the rest of the control loops. So I'm just going to delete one half. I'm just going to mirror it. And I'm just going to work on one side. Disconnect this edge right here. Make this one right here. And let's just get rid of the edges that are not doing anything for us. So now that we've gone ahead and added all our edge loops, we can add a subdivision surface modifier to this. And you'll see that we have better topology with this one or as opposed to this one. So this one has the three spoke pole still on that boundary loop and we still have that five spoke pole hanging out on that boundary loop and we also have a lot of excess edges that are not adding to the silhouette in any way. So with this, what's going to end up happening is when we add a translucent material or something that is highly specular and very reflective, it's going to distort some of those reflections. It's also going to distort some of the highlights that kind of run around those edges. So it's important for us whenever possible to try and shift that three spoke pole and that five spoke pole inward and away from that boundary loop. And so this is how we deal with three and five spoke poles.
Pre- and five-spoke poles are inevitable when modeling, so it's important to pay close attention to them and shift them away from problematic areas. So that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you learned something useful, and I will talk to you in the next one. Thanks for watching.